Fighting games aren't only mechanics, you know? Art style and characters are a big are a big deal. That shit's a big deal to me. And I, I need to like love the characters. If I I'll try it and I'll say it's fun and I think it is fun. I think this game is very fun. Um, I, this is the first time I've come back to it in literally a year and a half after only playing it when it came out. And I was like, this game's fun. It's just that there's not really anyone super for me. When's the last character in a fighting game I fell in love with that I had no nostalgic attachment to? Leo was pretty great. And then Leo captured me from gameplay. Lots of characters in KI. Fulgore was obviously a nostalgic attachment, but I wasn't a big Tusk fan before Tusk came out. I really liked Tusk. I wasn't, like, Hisaka was original. Strider's obvious. Monster Hunter. Batgirl? Yeah. I love G. Yeah, I think G's an awesome character. I like playing him and I love him. Takeda? Yeah, I fell in love with Takeda, man. My tolerance levels for certain things, like this game is like super anime, right? And like, I'm not obviously huge into crazy anime stuff. Uh, there's something about like Power Rangers, even though I never liked Power Rangers when I was a kid. I didn't. But just seeing long time existing characters show up in a fighting game and have unique, weird fighting styles. Like, fuck, man, even, like, the Sailor Moon game was like, this is weird and crazy! I don't know who these characters are, so it's less relevant. But just to see, like, Red Ranger and shit scream at each other and then do a cool fucking combos and stuff, I'm like, this is neat! This is- this is neat. I think this is actually really cool to see characters that have not been in fighting games suddenly in a fighting game that's from something really big, you know? I don't know if you noticed, chat, but it's pretty hard for a fighting game to come out that doesn't- that isn't already based on an existing, like, franchise that has a lot of history. Like, these games, like, Blaze Blue Cross Tag is literally a fighting game based on existing franchises that are large- large within their niche fan base, right? But is this game, like, by in turn, insanely popular. It's just like all the other anime games where it has its really niche hardcore community of either like fighting game fans that just like anime games or people that love anime. Is it able to reach beyond that spectrum? It's, it's tough. Like it's really hard to grab people. And that's the challenge of fighting games is that if you release a, a, a completely original IP of a fighting game, that is one of the hardest things. It's one of the toughest things to possibly do. Yeah, Skullgirls is a good example. Like, Skullgirls is one of the few examples that was able to... that was able to reach out and establish itself, but did it become, like, HUGE! Like, insanely, like, as as, as big as other long-running and existing fighting game franchises, like a la Smash and Street Fighter and Tekken and, you know, whatnot. It... no, because that's... that's tough. The... the fighting games that are, like, the biggest ones are the ones that have legacy, man. Because people like their legacy characters. They... they like that shit. Even... even KI was absolutely based on an old fighting game that people loved! Like, why do you think I liked KI? Because Killer Instinct in the fucking 90s was insane! That game sold a shit ton on the Super Nintendo. That game was fucking huge in arcades. All I'm saying is that for games like this, for games like, you know, uh, Guilty Gear Strive, they find their audience, which is this niche audience, but they're hardcore. And they're willing to buy, like, all of their games. Like, there's a good chance that a lot of people that were Guilty Gear players a lot of people probably tried out Blaze Blue or bought a Blaze Blue game at some point in their life, much less probably bought Blaze Blue Cross Tag at some point in their life because they share a similar audience. And that's a that's a that's a tough thing. That's a challenging ass thing. Do you think it's unlikely given the track record that you'll be interested in any characters that come from new fighting games due to lack of nostalgic familiarity or familiarity with the brand it comes from? Um I think for me, what it takes is perfect storm. Like if, if you get a character that looks cool and plays cool. Absolutely. Does that happen all the time? It doesn't. Perfect Storm isn't just looks cool, plays cool, but the game also has interesting mechanics, you know? Wasn't Gordo and his Gambit Skid made me play the game? Uh, Gordo and his Gambit Skid made me play the game as much as I did. I was planning on playing Blaze Blue Cross Tag for one night, raiding the supers, and then having that be that. If I didn't have at least a couple of characters and the mechanics weren't as fun as they were in this game, which is definitely true, I wouldn't have come back to it. To be honest, chat, like, I grew up just loving Capcom games and almost everything else fucking sucked. Like, extremely limited on the fighting games that I liked. Like, everything else that wasn't Capcom was, like, inferior or bad. But I also really enjoyed the Soul Calibur series. I also liked Tekken a lot. I did like those things, but Capcom was, like, the prestige. It wasn't until a bit later when Capcom fell to- fell below their ranks and they didn't have any good fighting games anymore, if not any fighting games anymore, that I started playing other things, like Guilty Gear and stuff like that, and being like, Yo, this is way better. This is literally like 20 fucking years ago. It took for moments of them to be at their weakest where you start playing other stuff. The craziest thing to me is that Capcom's shortcomings opens the- op has opened the waves of opportunity for other fighting games to fucking flourish. And that is extremely true now. 
and it's extremely true when the Capcom's fighting games were in their least efficient too, which was after CVS2. In a post-CVS2 world, what did they have? Capcom Fighting Evolution, arguably Capcom's worst fighting game. Nobody liked it. Nobody liked it. And what happened in that time frame? Games like Guilty Gear thrived. Games like Tekken thrived. That's when Tekken 5 was. Tekken 5 was fucking amazing in that time frame, dude. Tekken 5 was incredible. Guilty Gear XX and the different versions of Guilty Gear XX that were growing within that time frame were fucking huge. People loved those games, man. Now there's a kind of a similar thing happening, right? Like anime games are on the rise. There is a similar situation happening now where like now Capcom isn't doing... Capcom's had eight years of their fighting games being mostly pissing people off. And now what has happened? Like a lot of anime games have shown up to shown up. Tekken has now shown up to sort of take in the ranks. Like it's kind of like history is literally repeating itself. The crazy part is that once again, due to Capcom's fucking negligence when it comes to a lot of their fighting game division, which literally happened in the mid 2000s, it's opened up the opportunities for people to play things that aren't just Capcom fighting games. Because dude, you heard you heard it from Daisuke, like Capcom gets this weird amount of prestige to them for some reason, and that the only reason that is is because they're like the goddamn godfathers. They were like one of the first ones, right? Even in Daisuke's interviews that he was talking about at Arc Revo, he goes on to say like, they, they look up to Capcom fighting games as them being like, that's like the golden standard of fighting games is Capcom stuff. He, like, he looks up to Street Fighter 3, like I think he said Third Strike specifically, as like the most incredible fighting game ever. It's the fact that they have this legacy which has kept them afloat, and they have good good games under their under their their hat that definitely made people happy a la on, street here. fighter 4 marvel 3 you know but for the moments that capcom falters for those mid 2000s which people call you know Come the on, dark age of here. fighting games which is bullshit it was a dark age of being a capcom fan is what it was it was a dark age and for now the past eight years which has been in a capcom world post marvel ultimate marvel 3 because marvel 3 is now eight years old every capcom fighting games had a big major problem Come on, a huge problem and it's allowed other fighting games to flourish, which is actually good. But it's weird that this this thing happened again, you know? Capcom fighting games are huge. Everyone plays that shit. Like, a lot of people play that shit. It's like the big popular it thing. And then they go away. And something bad happens, and then they're just gone for a while. And then Capcom games come back. People are like, woo, this is fucking cool. Yeah, Capcom games, I like, I hate. I hate everything that's not Street Fighter 4. You know, everyone, if you were an 09 er you, you know that, dude, that... There was people that just like Street Fighter 4, and if you played anything else, you're stupid. Now we're in another state again, where Capcom is sort of, their fighting games are like, ugh, and everyone else has picked up the fucking mantle, and is kicking ass, and doing better than they ever have. I started making Street Fighter videos and stuff right, right before, like, the boom of Street Fighter 4, to watch it all come back, to literally get to its, the, the biggest it's been, and to watch it crash for years now, and then watch other fighting games come up and take the mental. And now, arguably, I say Arc System Works is... Arc System... Arc System Works is... picking up the slack more than ever. More than ever. It's interesting. Like, fucking fighting game... history... is interesting. <laughs>